In this short talk, we'll be looking at pain and healthy lifestyle. First of all, we need to gauge an understanding of what pain is. By definition, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Pain can be a useful warning sign to prevent us from damaging our tissues, but can also be a faulty alarm system when it's sensitised. Pain can be categorised into two ways, depending on why we're experiencing that pain, and it's important to understand the difference. First of all, acute pain is pain we might experience in response to an injury. It can last as long as our tissue's healing time, which varies depending on our tissue health and blood supply. It can last from weeks to months, but almost all tissues heal within a three month time frame. The second category is persistent pain. This is pain that lasts for longer than it takes for that damage to our tissues to heal. And it may or may not be associated with damage as such. Instead, this pain can be influenced by many factors, some of which we're able to manipulate and change. So pain does not equal damage becomes a really important statement for people who have experienced pain for longer than three months in duration. The most common cause of pain around the shoulder comes from irritated muscles or tendons. Changes to activity, small or big, can cause muscles and tendons to overload. This can be short term and fit into our acute pain bracket or it can be a gradual overload over time. The same changes can cause muscle inhibition, where our muscles might stop activating as efficiently as we need them to, to perform our daily activities. This might cause other muscle groups to compensate, for example, in our neck, shoulder, upper back, which can in turn create the sensation of muscle tightness and soreness. So what can you do to improve that sensation of pain? So the first thing we can do is exercise these muscles and tendons. This helps bring vital blood flow and nutrients to the muscle to grow and recover. This also starts to expose your tendons to load, which can adapt to tendon structure over time, meaning that your tendon will be less irritable. Choosing an appropriate load for strengthening our muscles and tendons is really important because the structures involved need to be challenged, but not so much that it might provoke a flare up in symptoms of pain. Your physiotherapist will have provided you with an individualized home exercise program which should fit this description. Next, we can look at our lifestyle choices. Poor or unhealthy lifestyles can lead to a build up in chemicals and fat in our bloodstream and in our body. This can affect the rate in which our muscles and tendons heal, recover or get stronger. Consider smoking cessation, eating a balanced diet and exercising regularly to a moderate intensity. You can tell when you're exercising to a moderate intensity as you may feel an increase in your body temperature and your heart rate you might start to perspire and you might find you're getting a little bit short of breath or unable to hold a conversation. Our next component is sleep health. Sleep health is really important for muscle growth and recovery, so we should factor this in. We encourage you to have a good pre-bedtime routine. Avoid daytime napping and caffeine in the afternoon and evening times to try and avoid blue light before sleep. So light from televisions, phones or tablets like iPads. If you find that lying on your side is painful or disrupting your sleep in any way, as we often do with shoulder pain, you can try sleeping with a pillow or cushion under your arm. If your difficulty with sleep lies beyond these simple tips, you may wish to check out uh, the NHS Live Well Advice for Insomnia. Our final component to consider is our mental health. Have a think about any stresses or anxieties that might be contributing to your pain. 
Stress affects us in many ways, not just socially and psychologically, but can also contribute to muscle tension and changes in our chemical balance, which makes us more sensitive to pain. Although we may not be able to prevent the trigger of your stress, we can certainly encourage you to help manage your stress and its effects on your body better. The following slides show some useful information that you may wish to look at. They're all related to the talk today and might help you on your journey to a healthier lifestyle. 